Joining me now is Terry Lynch. He's the CEO of Power Nickel. And Terry, the last update we had from you was at PDAC, actually, and you talked about the NISC project. But as of the end of April or so, you now own 80%. You completed that purchase. What does that do for you? Well, you know, it was always expected to come because that was part of our agreement. So it really, really doesn't do much uh, psychologically. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, it puts us in control of the pro project, obviously, and we're, we're the operator and have been since day one. So um, and now we're, we're just moving towards, uh, uh, you know, you know, further exploration successes and uh, moving toward a production decision. So um, that just makes it easier, I guess. And you're bringing people on. I noticed that Dr. Steve Beresford was brought on. How does he fit into the uh, the picture? Yeah, he's probably one of the foremost uh, geological minds in terms of the field of uh, polymetallic discoveries. He used to be uh, chief geologist at First Quantum at MMG and chief geoscientist at uh, IGO. So um, we, we contacted him once we made our initial discovery hole about a year ago, where we had the eight meters of almost one ounce uh, platinum group metals and one and a half percent copper and some gold. And you know, at that point, we thought, you know, while we have obviously the name like power nickel, we're a nickel sulfide. Uh, you know, predominant uh, uh, resource package at the moment. We we saw this and thought, hey, maybe this is morphing into a polymetallic deposit. So we contacted him, and and you know, because I've I've been aware of his uh, his talents. My my son actually had sent me a great video that he had done that seemingly described NISC, even though it wasn't obviously NISC that he was talking about. Anyway, uh, started the dialogue, and 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 uh, you know, when we started to hit the uh, uh, drill holes uh, again in uh, what we called the line zone. Uh, in January, and we started to see immediate success visibly. Uh, I reached out to Steve and said, "Hey, I think this thing's really coming together." So he said, "Well, give me the assays." I did, and and then uh, we had a you know technical meeting, and he said, "Well, I think you really got one." So um, yeah, so we, we we brought him on, and we hope to uh, he's coming over, and he'll help to guide us really on this next phase of exploration because polymetallics are, are a different animal. Um, some of the biggest mines, most valuable mines in the world, are polymetallic. In fact, the world's most valuable mine uh, is Norilsk. You know, the Russians, uh, uh, it's known as a nickel platinum uh, palladium uh, play, but has produced 20 million ounces of gold. So it's a, it's a, a it very super rare uh, to have a polymetallic discovery. But if you get one, you sort of have a tiger by the tail. Oh, okay, but when you say they're different and a special beast, how so? Do you have to drill at different in different angles? And no, them? no, no. I mean, it's just different from the the you know the uh, composition of the metals. It's very in, in this case, in our case, you know, we've been importing very high copper percentages. Like I think, you know, our last hole on Monday was uh, uh, you know almost uh, you know over five percent copper, but copper equivalent was like nine and a half percent. You know, we've had fourteen percent over fourteen meters, eleven percent over eleven meters. You know, crazy numbers. Uh, and really rich uh, copper and PGMs. So generally speaking, copper and PGMs don't uh, aren't both rich. You'll have one that's rich and the other one just like, uh, you know, uh, it's a trace uh, or, or the other, but never the two both being high. This is a, you know, a, an anomaly. And in mother nature in mining, if you have a high grade anomaly, that's a very good thing. Okay. I saw that announcement, 15.4 meters at nine and a half percent copper. And I, I have to put that in context, if I could, in terms of what does that do for you commercially? Well, I mean, it's just super valuable rock, right? I mean, uh, it, you know, it, you know, for 43 101 reasons, we really can't talk about the value of the rock. But I mean, obviously, uh, you know, it, 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 the, the denser the, 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 the rock in terms of uh, minerals uh, and the values it carries, the more profitable the rock it is to process, right? So, so, so this is this rock is 10x times more profitable to process than most rocks you would find that still would be commercial. So, so it, it obviously, from a commerciality perspective, vaults the thing forward. This thing will be generating very high, you know, profit margins when it's put in production. We believe so. So that's been an enormous uh, step forward for us. You know, talk to me about that line discovery. I mean, in terms of the challenges, is it uh, close transportation? Are there other issues? Um, yeah, it, I mean, honestly, it's probably uh, one of the most easiest uh, deposits I've ever worked with. It's uh, literally off the road of uh, in Quebec. It's in Namaska is, is a, a regional uh, village, has a regional airport, home of the Cree government. Uh, we're located off a of route north, which is a major highway at that point, three, three lanes. We drive off the road. It's at the surface. This deposit is at the surface. Stop, starts at five meters. 
at this point it's down to, to about 275 meters but it's uh is literally about as good as it gets in terms of mining terms wow jurisdictionally will this be an open pit mine then yeah it would be open pit initially uh you know uh, this particular shoot that we're working on is about uh 225 meters wide 100 meters being the primary meat zone 50 75 meter halo on either side uh and it's at this point extends about 275 meters deep would expect you know this is the arcane belt and you know somewhat like the activity it shoots like this typically run eight to ten times their width so we'd expect there to be considerable uh more ground you know, more uh you know uh, mineralization to discover underneath this uh, and also historically uh these types of shoots are not onesies if the geological event happened to make this one shoot you know it happened in an area and it probably impregnated the shoots uh, across the area uh steve beresford feels that we'll find uh shoots that are this one's copper dominated he feels we'll find ones that are more uh precious metal dominated others that'll be tgm dominated and he predicts that we'll even find one that'll be more zinc dominated so so we'll see so we're obviously uh, that'll be the, the primary thing that we'll be doing in the in the shut summer is drilling out the re remainder of this shoot and looking for uh, you know the shoots that we think will be close by. I want to come back to that uh, some summer exploration that goes uh, forward, but uh, the province of Quebec is that a friendly jurisdiction? Jurisdiction, best jurisdiction in the world, in my view, uh, for three reasons. Uh, one is they've done a tremendous job over the years, the government of Quebec, of building infrastructure regionally throughout the province. So. The route north is a classic example. Like it's a major highway that uh, connects most of the province in the north. Yet you can, you know, you, you don't have to build it. It's already there. So in our case, we just drive off the road, and there we are. Across the street from us, uh, just uh, literally across the street, is a Hydro Quebec substation. So you've got power, you got roads. We're eight kilometers outside of the town of Damascus, which is, you know, a, a regional village. It's got uh, hotels and accommodations where our staff can stay. It's also the home of the Cree government. That's the other thing that the Quebec government has done an amazing job of is. They really worked with the First Nations to uh, partner with them to make them understand the benefits of mining, how it could enrich their community and, and help their uh, community stay together and grow and prosper. Uh, so that's been fantastic. And then finally, the fiscal terms in Quebec are unparalleled in the world. Uh, it's a part of the Canadian uh, sort of uh, story as well. Canadian federal government gives a 30% uh, tax credit for critical mineral uh, exploration now, which is awesome. And Quebec, uh, you know, basically taps it up with some programs that really bring it up to more than uh, you know, 100%. So we're often able to uh, get two for one exploration deals. So if you look at our history of financing, generally speaking, we've you know we've raised money at uh, two and three times our market price uh, because we've been able to get uh, the cash uh, from the high net worth Quebec investors, and then we immediately sell it to our permanent investors uh, th through a structure called the charity flow through buyback, and it sort of allows the company to get double the exploration money. Uh, but it puts the shares in permanent hands right out of the gate. So it's really a, a phenomenal structure, and it's uh, Quebec has sort of uh, pioneered it, I think. Interesting. Uh, back to the summer, how robust will the exploration be, and, and how quickly can you get on the land? Yeah, so we're uh, at um, goose break right now. There's two seasons you can't drill there, goose season and moose season. Uh, so it'll be over end of May, and uh, early June we'll be back in there, and we've got pads set up, and we'll be... Uh, drilling, you know, the entire summer. So uh, we expect to get about, I would think, about 8,000 meters in this summer, uh, 20 holes or thereabouts. And uh, I think that'll be super productive. And then we'd expect to follow that up with a fall program of about another 15,000 meters. So we'll have two rigs turning, and uh, we're really going to go at this thing. Those goose and moose. Terry, thanks so much for your time.